hope you don't mind me. So I'm just going to say a little bit about the test. I'm recording this, so this will be on the um, on the uh, um, the video that I'll upload. Right. To you. So you do have a test on Thursday. Uh, the test is in the classroom. Uh, you will have to do it on a computer. Uh, you do not have any outside aids. Uh, however, except for one, you can bring a one A4 sheet written on either side, same as you did with the uh, previous exam. So it will be pretty much the same as that. Now I have now, if you feel that for whatever reason, and this would be a health reason, uh, the test will be computer based. If you feel for whatever health reason that you cannot attend the test, we need to know that now. Uh, so when I say we, I use the word we because it's not just me, that that information has to also go to Lee so that the accommodation can be made. Uh, unfortunately, we do have a uh, rule in this course that we have to do these computer based tests. I am sorry about that. So if, for example, if you had a COVID incident in your family, you may not be able to come and that's fair. You can't come because that's basically the, the rule of the country almost. So um, if that's the uh, situation, you cannot come, then you cannot come and you won't be penalized for that. Uh, however, and this, I, I don't know the way around this, we have to do something about this, but we can only do this for one test or one assessment in the semester. Uh, but, so what will happen? Uh, if you cannot make it, please let me know, but not just let me know, please let Lee know and he will he will um, he will make the accommodation for you. So we need to know that as soon as possible before Thursday. Uh, and then what will happen is you won't lose the marks for the test, but what will happen is I will take the final exam or some other test or some other assessment and I will use that um, uh, I will use that. Um, for the marks. So you won't lose the marks, you'll just have the marks from somewhere else. But you must have a, a good, a valid health reason. I mean, it's not just that I didn't study, so I think I'll just, uh, you, you know what I mean? Uh, so if you feel that that's the route that you must go down because you can't come for whatever reason, then you need to talk to Lee. So I'm just gonna put up Lee's details here. It's uh, Lee Willis, and he is the, um, so if you feel that that is your situation, you should call him or email him and you could uh, uh, also copy me on that and we will make an accommodation for you. All right, so that's what I wanted to say about the test. Otherwise you should be there. Students, you should be there. Um, now the test, will be, you guys are section three. So that will be in room 202 or 204. Um, and I, I welcome you to that test. Now, the thing that you should, um, am I still recording here? Let's see. Yeah. So in the test, uh, yeah, it's like a 15 mark test. It's, it's kind of a big test. It will be on computers. Uh, you will be socially distanced so that you're all safe. All that you come, uh, be, be, be assured that I will be wearing a, a, a mask and you will be wearing a mask uh, so that you're safe. Um, but now this has become a bit of an issue because some people have been a little bit concerned. Uh, well, it's not just concerned with the recent situation, uh, which is that um, there are some increases in the number of uh, positive cases in Qatar. So that's a, that's a concern, but we still have to, in this course, we have to do this come to the college and do this test. So, so I don't want you to take it sort of um, um, in a casual way. It's uh, being treated very seriously. Um, so that's what I have to say. Make sure you come early and we'll sit you down. Make sure that you're, we'll make sure that you're situated away from everybody and so that you're safe and so that everybody else is safe. Um, yeah. All right, so that's what I wanted to say about that. Um, now the test itself is going to be uh, you writing some CSS and HTML code. Uh, and uh, that will be uh, to show that you know how to do adaptive, fluid, and fixed layout. So that's what we're gonna look at today. That's what we're gonna look at with lab.
All right, so what we've got, and I've resumed recording now, is that here is a web page that is styled in a certain way. Now, notice what's happening when I change the width of the window. As I change the width of the window, the way that the actual page is being displayed is changing. This is what we call adaptive layout. That is as opposed to other kinds of layout that we've referred to before, which is um, fluid layout or fixed layout. And I just want to sort of have a look at that briefly. So if I open this with Notepad, so you can see that here, this is the um, this is the the uh, HTML. Now the HTML of this page has in it in the head, in the head. I hope you can see that there. We've got a couple of things there that I don't know if we've uh, used too much. Now you have done the link before. Can anybody tell me what that link's about? I hope you can. External CSS. Sorry. External CSS. External CSS. Thank you, Zainab. That's exactly right. So that means we have another file somewhere, which is called phone store style adaptive CSS. It's in a directory called CSS. Uh, I actually have it in my notepad, but that's where all the CSS is. The CSS is in an external file. Very good thing, Zainab. Now, there's this other tag there that you might not be familiar with because we haven't done that before. And this is the start. This is the crux. This is how we start our adaptive uh, layout. What we need to have is we need to have some way of telling the browser, uh, sorry, telling our, our HTML, uh, the, the CSS, that the browser has changed its size. And we do that with this meta tag. So the meta means about. So this tag is about what's happening, what's happening for the viewport. And what it's doing is the content of that is to check the width of the, of the, um, of the browser window. And so that is sensitizing the CSS and, the, and via the CSS to the HTML to make it look different depending on what is the width of the viewport. Now, how that is applied is in the CSS. So we are, our meta tag here needs to be in all of our documents if we want those documents to have an adaptive CSS. Then, then we'll actually apply the adaptive CSS through the, uh, through the CSS file. So let's have a look at that CSS file. And I'm just gonna start at the start here. Uh, I have some other CSS files here, like I've got the phone store style, which if you look at it, it's a lot shorter than the adaptive style one, but, but, and the fluid is also a little bit shorter, but, but the thing that's, the thing about them is the start of the HTML in the adaptive CSS is kind of the same as for the fixed or fluid. That is, a lot of the um, a lot of the code is the same. So things like setting up the background color of the body and uh, things like actually setting up the width of the page. Um, uh, there we've got uh, max width. Uh, we might put a min width in the, in another one somewhere. Um, uh, basic the basic HTML is there now. What I want you to think of, I don't know if you've done much computer programming at all or any, but normally or, or just reading a letter. What we normally do is we start at the top and we work our way down to the bottom. And and you know, it would be easy for us as we're making our H our CSS to just look at it and say each of these is independent of the other. Well, that is possible, but there sometimes the order in which things occur does impact on other things later. And so that's the case here when we're doing this media thing. You can read this like a computer program where you start at the start and you work your way down. So what that means is as the program loads the HTML, what it's gonna do first is style the body, then it's gonna style the H1, then it's gonna style the menu, then it's gonna style the nav bar, it's gonna style all of this stuff and all of that looks kind of similar. And in fact, all of that is pretty much the same as if we had the fixed, um, the fixed um, 
way of doing things. And what, what I mean by fixed is have a look at this class. We've set the, the image to be exactly 300 pixels. There's no changing there, right? We've set this product class to be exactly 370 pixels. And if we look in the top of our, um, our um, uh, this one, it, we've actually got a more of a, um, a fluid style there, sort of little, so we can do that a little bit differently uh, with our with our widths where in this one, we're, we've actually made it 31%. Now that has been how that's affected when we have, so this is what the web page looks like if we just, opened it up to full width, all of this code here would happen. And that's what, and then we get a web page that looks like that. So let's, let's, let's look at that a little bit more. Uh, mo most important here, I think, is this, um, this 31% thing. The 31% is happening to the product class. I hope you remember because this should be familiar to you. Lab three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? We, we use this a lot. Uh, so the product class is the element in our page, which is bounded by this um, dot, um, dotted border. So it has a border which is dotted. That is a product. And so what we see on this is three of those columns. They become columns, but three of those product classes side by side. And that is achieved by doing this. That's achieved. So actually, this should be familiar to you. That's achieved by floating it to the left, right? And then by making the width of it 31%. 31% of what? 31% of the container in which it is found. And so the product container is found inside the, um, well, inside a container that's called container. And that's why we called it container. So the container is uh, can be 1200 picks. So it's got a max size. It doesn't seem to have a min size. It's got a max size. So when I stretch it out, you see that the container, which has the white background, doesn't get any bigger. It's got a max size of 1200 picks. So hopefully you can see that. So that is the code in our adaptive layout, which is kind of similar to the other ones. And we'll get back to them in a minute. But then there's something strange happens right here at the end of our grid clear. And all of this stuff above that is stuff that you've seen before, right? Basically, you could just take that straight out of some other labs that you've done. Just plunk it in there. It's basically the same. But then we get to this different thing, which is the app media. And what's this app media about? Well, the app media is the thing which was sensitized in the HTML by this meta tag. This meta tag is setting the scene so that we can use the app media. So the app media, you can look at it as kind of like an if statement, right? Basically what it's saying is, okay, you have styled the whole page and you've got your little window there and it's got everything going on in it. And that's nice. But what if we made the window so that it was smaller than a thousand picks? What if we did that? Well, then we might want to change the way it looks. And so, so what are some of the things that we could do to change the way it looks? Well, we might change the color of the background. We might put the padding a little bit different. But most important is our product class, which is this thing here. We're not going to, we'll take up 40 six percent of the width now it does have some other constraints on it because uh if you look in the stuff above you'll see that the product image um well has a has a width of, of 80 percent of um of its uh of the entire thing for the product class so let's see what will happen if i make the window less than a thousand picks so i'm going to do that now i'm going to start i'm going to start compressing this and you'll, you'll be able to tell when it gets to that point because you'll see the page change. And maybe you can guess how the change will be. Here at the moment, these are actually compressing, aren't they? Because, but they're always staying to 31% of the entire width of the window. When I get to 1000, and it must be right around there, it changes from 31% to 46%. And uh, just a little bit of simple math, 31% three times is 93. That's still less than 100%. 46% two times is 92. That's less than 100%. And that's why we have two of them, two windows, two of those class 
inside that window. And we can compress them a little bit more. We see them compressing. And you see the image compressing as well. And we keep compressing, keep compressing, and then it changes again. OK, so why is that? All right, so when we got down to um, when we got down to uh, 1,000 picks, we, we changed some, not all, but some of the styling of this other stuff. Now, remember, we this program works from top to bottom, and so all this stuff will be styled. But then we're going and styling some of the stuff that we already styled above and changing some things, right? So what are we changing? We're changing some color. Uh, well, actually, we're not changing the background color, but we changed the, uh, what do we change? We changed the, um, the text color. I didn't even notice that, right? So uh, let's go back there. You see the color change? Yeah, here it's a little bit darker. It seems, well, I don't know. It's hard for me to see. But uh, apparently there's a slight change there. But uh, most important is this change here in the product class. It's now 46% instead of instead of 31%. Then when I, get, when I keep compressing, it changes again. When do you suppose that would be? Well, it's here. When we make the width less than 700, and this is why it's important to put these things in order, right? What the what this is saying is everything above 1,000 is going to be styled like this. Everything below 1,000 is going to be styled like that, but these with these changes. Everything below 700 is going to be styled like those things, but with these changes. And so that's how it works. Everything that's 700 is going to be the same as everything uh, 1,000, just logically, you could see that because 7, 000, 700 is less than 1,000. And so it's going to have all of this styling, but we're going to make some little changes. And what, are the, what happens when we get to 700? The main thing that changes is we just change the width uh, from of the product class so that it takes up 95% of the window. There's some other stuff there that all relates to a different form, uh, a different um, HTML file, which is the form file. So I would have to open that for you to see it. And so that's this one. So um, now what it's saying here is when we get down to less than 700, the width of the product is 95%, but there's some other things, right? The image is 20% of the of the product, and that looks about right. And the image is left aligned, and the text box is left aligned, and this is H2, and it's left aligned. And But um, if it's less than 700, you can squeeze it. Uh, it has a maximum width of 600 picks if it's less than 700, right? And so this won't stretch out forever. Um, our our um, product description is a big font. That's right. Uh, the margin is 30 picks, so we've got 30 picks here between, um, well, actually, that may be at the top, uh, and it's floated to the left. This floating to the left here allows to make sure that these things all fall in line there. And yeah, we've got a checkbox that is floated to the left as well. The checkbox was actually coded before the image, and so that's why it falls into the left between before the picture. And... Um, yeah, that's about it. So that the way I want you to read that is first, the entire page is is styled. Then it's like a big if statement. If the width of the page is less than a thousand, we restyle. We restyle some things, not everything, but some things. And the main one, the one that was most important was change the width of one class to 46%. And then if it gets smaller still, we restyle some other things a little bit too. And so that's how we got these uh, different pages. I hope that uh, helps you. Now let's let's uh, let's sort of do something a bit fun. We still got a bit of time here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to edit the code. And let's change let's change the um, so that's the CSS. Let's go to the answer. Let's change the CSS. So we've got it in adaptive. What if we use the fluid? So what do I mean by using the fluid? Uh, here I have a fluid CSS, which is CSS for the same thing, but you'll notice that it's missing all of that Mac, uh, all of that um, 
media command stuff. So it's not going to change in the same way as the other. And uh, what do we got? Uh, we got a max and a min width there. Uh, otherwise, we've got some percents, etc. So that's kind of cool. So let's change this back and we'll see what happens. So this is fluid. And what you can see happening is with the fluid, it's always three columns. Now, why is it always three columns? Because in, it doesn't matter what the width is. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong page. It doesn't matter what the width is. The product stays at 31%. And I'm sorry if this is... So you see that the product is staying at 31%. There's no, no at media command. It, the product is 31%. So there's going to be three of them. That's fluid. Um, it's it's fluid. I hope you can tell it's fluid by uh, where is it? Oh, goodness. Here, right? I hope you can tell it's fluid because things seem to compress. Do you see them compressing until we get to our minimum width? Remember, I don't know if you saw it there. It had a minimum width of 600 picks, had a maximum width of of a thousand of 1,200. So when we try and get bigger than 1,200, no more stretching. When we get smaller than 600, no more squishing. Where did we see that? Right here. It had a maximum width of 1,200 and a minimum of um, 600. So that's that's that one. Let's go back and cha change the um, change it from fluid to this would be uh, fixed, I guess. So the same code. I'm going to and now and I'll have to sort of see if I've got yeah here's that code there. So this one we don't there's my, no no percents in here right. What we've done in this one is we've said that the width of the page is 1200, no change. And the width of the product is 370, no percents there, okay? And the width of the image is 300, no percents. So how's that? This is a fixed, fixed. And what we see is, yeah, I can make the page bigger or smaller, but all that happens is that I lose some information if I try and make it narrower because the product class is a fixed width and the page is a fixed width. And so if I make my, if I make my, um, my, um, uh, if I make my window smaller, it just loses some information. So that's that one. Um, so back on here, that was the style going back to the adaptive. That's the one with, which is most, most interesting, I think. Um, so, uh, I hope that you can follow what I'm doing here. It's just changing the uh, CSS by picking up a different CSS file by changing the um, tag, the link tag. And so back to this one, I hope that I've explained that and um, we will change this so you can see that going back to that. I think I saved that. Yes. Um, wow. That I think I did not. I think what happened is I misspelled the name. So if I misspell the name, I got this thing without without the CSS applied to it. So it's kind of ugly. So uh, let's go back and look in my thing and what what happened. How did I misspell the name? Um, uh, photo store style. I've done that before. Uh, adaptive CSS. So don't misspell the name. Your page will look really bad because it won't be styled. Hello. Uh, so now I've styled it again. Hello. So I hope, actually, I hope that worked out for you because you can see the effects there, right? What happens if I misspell my the name of my uh, CSS file in the link? Well, then it, it doesn't work, right? And we get this really bad looking thing. So just do that again, right? I, I misspelled it. I well, just, just misspell it. It's really bad, right? Um, you get this strange thing. So uh, if you see some weird things going on, it could be something like that. When we spell it right, we get a we get. A bed. So this is the adaptive one. I've talked a lot. I, I'm at this point. I'm repeating myself, and I'm going to stop doing that. And.